little smile, a little faith, a little love, a little kindness. A little hand, a little help can be a miracle. Then the hand touch a life, we can change the whole. For allowing the song come out before we start, in as much as we are still, still in the morning. Eh? So, 
before we start or say anything, I want two volunteers to come out and pray for us, a Christian and a Muslim. Good morning, everyone. Good Good morning, Prispa. Good morning, our visitors. My name is Aleri Petrus from GSS Chika, Airport uh, Abuja. We are in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us today, oh Lord. We say thank you. Thank you for provision. Thank you for protection. We say thank you. Oh Lord, we are doing this program, oh Lord. Anything that will cause any bad report, oh Lord, send it away from us in the name of Jesus. Protect our parents anywhere they are living, oh Lord. Close them with your blood of Jesus. Amen. Our visitors, as well, they are going back, oh Lord. Bless them and cover them with your blood of Jesus. Amen. Enemies shall not see them through in the name of Jesus. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My name is Fatima Rabi. I'm here. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can we keep quiet? Can we keep quiet? All right, thank you very much. If you want to know who we are, eh, you will keep quiet for your principal to give us a welcoming remark to tell us that, okay, we are welcome to your school. Yes, before we say any other thing, right? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, beloved students. The hour has come. We have been waiting for them, and here they are. They have said it, and they are here. The, the organization name is Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation. I want you to say it. Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation. Tell them welcome. They are here to better your life by teaching you so, some, things, some things you don't know, you are ignorant of. So today you will know the girls, the boys. But the people that are mostly concerned are the girls. The boys are also concerned. That is why you can see some boys around us. So we are very, very grateful to Ray of Hope Empowerment, Empowerment Foundation for choosing our school to come and do this kind gesture. We are really grateful and we will remain grateful. Thank you very much and you are very much welcome. Is that what you can do for your principal? Enough. Thank you very much. We are welcome to this school, right? Okay. So, the name of our foundation is Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation, just like your principal has said. And we are here because we want to celebrate Menstrual Hygiene Day with you. What did I say? Menstrual Hygiene Day. I didn't hear you. Menstrual Hygiene Day. Awesome. So, it's actually supposed to be on the 28th, but because we love you too much, we are here to celebrate it with you on Friday. Please clap for yourselves. All right. So, you know, in every organization, there's always a head. And to introduce our founder, I want to show you the founder of this beautiful foundation. Her name is Princess Christabel Ijoma Silva John. That's the beautiful lady. Please, oh, that's my boss. Can you please clap for her? Because it's your third you're clapping for, not for her. Thank you very much. All right, um, well, she's not here alone. We are an entire team, and I'll just do a brief one to introduce uh, the whole team of Rohef. That's Mr. Solomon. That's Mr. John, our media person. Okay, 
behind there is uh, to Toki, that's her name. Please wait for us. Thank you very much. And this is Abiola. Mr. Abiola, please clap for him. And then we have uh, Kelechi. She is the executive director of Guiding Light Foundation. So glad to have you here. Okay, fine. Without wasting your time, we'll be calling on the founder of Real of Hope Empowerment Foundation to give her opening remarks. Please, jam your hands for her. Good morning, uh, esteemed principal, vice principal, and the dedicated staff of Junior Secondary School, and to the wonderful children of this great school. I'm so glad to be in your midst this morning. Hope you're all doing well. Okay, without wasting much of your time, my name is Christabel Silver John. I am the national coordinator of Ray of Hope Empowerment Foundation. Like she has said, what we have come to do here today is to commemorate Menstrual Hygiene Day. I don't know if you have heard about this day. Menstrual Hygiene Day. How many of you have heard about it? Okay, those of you said who said you have heard about it? What day is it usually celebrated and what does it stand for? If you know you raised your hand up, tell me what day is it celebrated and what does it stand for? It's been celebrated on May 28th every year about taking care of girls and their personal body and how to treat their hygiene on menstruation. So for those of you who do not know, like she said, May 28th of every year is a day set aside to commemorate International Menstrual Hygiene Day, a day that we talk about menstruation, the taboos, the stigmas, the shame that is associated with menstruation. I know many of us, we know, growing up, a lot of times when girls talk about menstruation, they hide to talk about it, even till now. People cannot come out with boldness and tell people that I'm menstruating because certain people feel it's a taboo, or it's a disgrace, or it's something that is not normal. But I want to tell you today that menstruation is as normal as anything. Menstruation is what brings about birth, about human life. If you do not menstruate, you won't have a child. I hope you know that. So clap for yourself if you're a girl. So many of you here are the future mothers of this, of this nation. So without wasting much of your time, let me continue. It's my great honor to address you all today as we celebrate the seventh as we celebrate the seventh anniversary of our initiative stop the red spot and part the girl this is an initiative that is aimed to address period poverty in nigeria and to ensure that every girl and woman has access to sanitary products and decent washrooms i don't know if you have toilet in your school and you all have access to it. Okay. And I hope you take care of them. Because if it's not clean enough, you will not want to use it. So what we want to talk about today is to talk about girls not having access to sanitary products and decent washrooms. You know, sometimes when we girls come to school, they cannot change in school because they don't have toilets. So you are privileged that your school has toilets. So for your school management. We have an initiative in our organization tagged Stop the Rest for the Girl. The aim is how we can end period poverty. If you go to rural areas, a lot of girls who are from low income families, their families struggle to provide them with sanitary pads. Sanitary pad becomes like a luxury, you know, where you have a lot of needs. The least that will be on your mind is to think of how to get sanitary pads for the girl child. So we want to eradicate that by supporting girls from low-income families with sanitary pads and then information on how to break certain taboos. When people talk about taboos around your area, you tell them no. 
there is no business with these things with menstruation. So that is all we come to address today. And as we commemorate our 2024 menstrual hygiene, it's crucial that we come together as a community to create a period friendly Nigeria, one where girls and women can menstruate with dignity without being shamed and stigmatized. It's unacceptable that many of our girls and women still lack access to basic menstrual hygiene products like sanitary pads or face limited access to washrooms for proper hygiene during menstruation. As we celebrate the seven years of this initiative, we want to acknowledge the progress we have made and the lives we have changed since the launch of this initiative. We have supported over 20,000 girls in 44 public schools in six states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Through this initiative, we've been able to help girls stay in school, reduce girls keeping classes due to unavailability of sanitary parts. And we have also created opportunities for them to reach their full potentials. We commit to continue to strive forward in efforts to eradicate prayer, poverty, and stigma in Nigeria. Let us work together for a prayer friendly Nigeria where every girl and woman can live with dignity, respect, and where menstrual hygiene needs are met. Thank you so much. Let us continue to stop the response and part the girl. So today I want to, it's a clarion call to all of us. It's not something that only NGOs can do. The schools still have a role to play, the government has a role to play. We all come together and make menstruation to become something that is as normal as eating food in Nigeria. Thank you so much. Come on, you can do better. Please clap for her. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma. Um, so the next thing that we'll be doing, uh, I, I heard that the school has the drama for us. Wow. Please, can we welcome the drama group? <laughs> Wonderfully clap for them. Good morning, Principal. Good morning, Vika Admin. Good morning, Vika Staff. Good morning, Mrs. Christabel John. Good morning, Real of Hope Empowerment Foundation Organization. My, my name is Precious Tehimba, and we are here to present a playlet. And the play is all about menstrual hygiene. As you watch and listen, may you remain blessed. Thank you. Aunties, sisters, and cousins. Menstruation is a regular thing for girls. It is a flow of blood from a girl's body. It is expected that a girl should always be neat and responsible when in a menstrual period. So don't laugh at, at her. Can we please clap for them again? Thank you very much, LE Junior Secondary School. That was awesome. That was a beautiful drama presentation. All right. The, first, the next thing on our agenda is a talk on menstrual hygiene management and its impact on girls' education and empowerment. Did you hear that? What did I say? Exactly. Menstrual hygiene management and its impact on what girls' education and empowerment. Before we go into the session proper, 
I want a volunteer, particularly a boy, to tell us what he understands by menstruation. I know I'm asking. Let's be fast though. I don't there's no time. Is there a hand? Where's the hand? What I understand by menstruation is the girl should keep her private part clean and let her be let her check the time of her menstruation and to keep and to keep her environment clean. Thank you. out oh, yeah, who's going to tell us the meaning of menstruation a boy i want a boy let's not waste time this is the last person please hurry up hurry up hurry up Shawn is a monthly flow of blood from a girl child this shows that she's matured enough to have her own baby thank you that was awesome then i want to ask a question though i don't know where the blood is coming from is it from the mouth from the eye from the hand I want to be sure. Am I? Am I wrong? This is from our private part. Please, uh, I called hand. I called leg. I called eye. Me, I don't know which one is private part. No, she's a vagina. Please, let's go for him. That is also. All right. Those are the things we want to break, right? Are we together? Those are the things we want to break. A girl's private part is the vagina, and then the boy's private part is the penis, right? No, we are in school. This is for you to learn. I hope that you're able to learn. Okay? Okay. So now we know that menstruation is the what? Monthly flow of blood from where? The uterus. Uh, in a woman's vagina, eh? in a woman's um, reproductive organ, from the uterus through the vagina, every word, month, eh? every word, and it starts, for some people it starts as early as 8 years, whereas for others it starts as late as 19, okay? So we are saying in between 8 and 19 years, a girl is supposed to what? Eh? A girl is supposed to start menstruating or else she should go and check herself in where? The hospital. If you are between 8 and 19 years and you, you've not started menstruating. Between, no, from 8, eight years is early. But if you have passed 19 and you've not started menstruating, it means that well, something is wrong in your reproductive organ, right? And it means you need to check. If you don't check, it means that you are not menstruating, and what that means is you will not be able to give birth, right? Okay, now, for a girl, when she is ready to menstruate, or when she starts menstruating, it means she needs to do something, and that's why we're here. Menstrual hygiene what? Management. Okay, now I've started menstruating. How am I supposed to take care of myself while menstruating? You know that as soon as I get between eight or I start menstruating, people me myself for some people they get to know as in they have elder sister that's home telling them that okay when you need reach so 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 age you will start menstruating but for others they don't have people telling them there are some people who when they first start their menstruation one maybe they are scared eh? am i speaking am i correct some people were scared when they first saw their menstruation why because they were not told so we are here to tell you so that it's very what normal as for others there are some who they are made to feel that okay because you are menstruating now you are not a normal human being again am i correct for some people they say you can't cook again am i correct for some people they say you can't enter a place to worship am i correct for some people they say ah because you are menstruating, don't come near other people. Am I correct? Yes. So it happens. But is it correct? No. Is it right? No. Does that, because I'm menstruating, does it mean I'm no longer a human being? No. All right, fine. It means we are following. So that means that we have established that menstruation is a normal part of a woman. Eh? 
It's something that happens every month. If you've reached the age and you've not seen it, and maybe you're 19, like I said, it means what? There's something. There's something. All right, fine. So now I'm menstruating. How am I supposed to take care of myself? A normal girl is supposed to take care of herself. That's on a normal note. So in just two minutes, tell us how a girl, that's this one you're not menstruating, but how to take care of yourself as a girl. How a girl can take care of herself by bathing, bathe regularly, wash your underwear, don't allow yourself to be dirty, and also make sure you are clean at all times. And don't keep your environment dead. Please clap for her. That's to show that a girl is supposed to be neat, isn't it? So I'm focusing on the girls because it's menstrual hygiene day. For the boys, you can learn how to take care of yourself and that, please. <laughs> Don't mind me. The boy say so you're supposed to take care of yourself. That is, um, it's not only girls who are supposed to be neat. There are some boys that don't mind wearing their boxer for one week. Is that nice? Oh, I'm just saying, I don't think they are here. They are in another place, not in this school, okay? All right. So, on a normal day, a girl is supposed to be neat. But when you are menstruating, you're supposed to be what? Extra neat. Do you know why? There are some soldiers um, that will cause some good bacteria that usually block the vagina when you are not menstruating. What do I call them? Soldiers. And they are good words, bacteria in the body. But when you are menstruating, it means that the tissue, the blood, uh, has to come out. Uh? It means that the egg in your fallopian tubes, they did not see any um, distant sperm to fertilize them, to become a child. So they have to what? Go out. That is what comes out as what? Menstrual blood. So now when they are coming out, that blockage has to give way. Eh? Those soldiers just say, okay, let's give way for this blood to come out, right? So as they are giving way, it means anything can now come in. Eh? and what give you infection that's if you don't take care of yourself right so that is why it's important eh, for you when you are menstruating to make sure that you are neat eh? whatever you are using to hold your menstrual blood is supposed to be clean or else what did i say those soldiers that block the way for bad bacteria to enter inside your vagina they are no longer dead so they have to give way for the blood to come out, which means there's nobody protecting the gate again. The same way you have it. Right? Are we together? Okay, fine. So, um, that's the first part. Secondly now, what do I use to, you know, keep my menstrual blood together? I want it to be interactive, so just give chorus answers. I'll not okay, not chorus, I'll point. Okay, what are the things I can use to, you know, pad? Please let's clap for him. Is he correct? What, the, what else can I use? What else can I use? Not, I don't want chorus answer. One person. Soap. No, I mean material I can use to hold the blood, not to wash it. Okay. Just say it from there, say it from there, let's hear you. Tissue. Okay, what else? Okay, let's hear you. Pad, no, we, okay, fine. It means we know just pad and tissue, right? Is there another hand? Is there something else? All right. Reusable pad. Can we clap for her? Just a sound clap. Ah. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. She said reusable pad. That was awesome. So we have pad. Sanitary pad, disposable pad, then we have um, reusable pad. Disposable and reusable, right? Uh -huh. So we can see, we have an example here of um, a disposable pad, right? This is a disposable pad as we can see here. Then there's reusable. All right, so we have 
um, disposable pads. Those ones, the, it, me, reusable pads. Those ones it means I can wash them and do what? Use again, isn't it? We can also use napkins, which is still reusable pads, right? Very clean napkins, you can use them if you don't have money to buy pads because these are the things that make girls to start prostitution early because they don't have money to buy pad and one boy saying that you are fine no come i can buy pad for you but it's not free or you put your back at the uh -huh. so what we are saying now is stop instead of you to go and meet a boy to buy pad for you it's better that you go to a tailoring shop or buy a piece of material go to a tailoring shop and beg them or ask them to cut and sew for you so that you can use. I think it's cheaper that way. Or even if you cannot buy, just there are some big, big pieces of clothes that they will definitely not use it. And you can ask them, please, auntie, please, oh, can I use this one? Do you understand? Is it not cheaper that way? So now, let's go back to why we are making this discussion. He said, mm -mm. you mentioned tissue. Tissue is very light and can break easily. Once you soak it, <laughs> Even to clean your bum up, there are some times that if you don't do it well, it's good. Thank you very much. You understand what I mean? Now, this is a reusable pad. Can we see it? This is a reusable pad. It has been used, um, it's clothes they used to make it, meaning that it's cheap and very affordable. If it's, even if it's not cheap, at least this one you can afford it and you can use it for long instead of throwing it away at first use, right? So the next thing now, is a menstrual cup. Huh? This is the menstrual cup. Do you know how we use this one? You insert it into your vagina. Right? Yes, that's how it works. It's inserted into your vagina and then it collects the blood. Right? When it's full, you remove it and empty and wash. It's also reusable. Then you have tampons. This is also something to insert. And it's disposable, right? You don't use that one twice. Once it soaks, you remove it and throw it away. Are we together? Are we together? So what did I say about tissue? That is good? No. All right. Then wool. Some people also use wool. Wool too. It absorbs, yes, but it's not good enough. Do we know why? Because of the particles, you know? There are some kind, even wound, when you clean wound, you know that there are some particles that still remain inside that wound from the wool, right? So imagine that continuously you are using the wool continuously. Do you know what that would be lead to? It might not show immediately, or just like cancer. Cancer doesn't show up in one day. It will take time. Maybe after some years, 20, 10 years later, you will discover that you have one disease that you don't know where it's coming from. Meanwhile, if they trace it well, it will come from you using what? Wool. Because of those little, little particles that it leaves, right? So now the next thing, um, I think we're done. You read, uh, with types of pads, what to use and what not to use. At least now we know that we should, tissue is not right. Mm? We know, also know that wool is what? Not right. So fast, 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 let's move to how does menstruating affect a girl's education? Now I come to school and maybe there's no toilet in my school and I'm menstruating, how will I change? Do you know there are some schools that don't have toilets? Do we know that? What is the implication on the girl child? It means that when she comes to school and she's menstruating, she will not be comfortable. She has to go back home. And how would that affect her studies? It means she has to miss class. Abi, can you stay at home and see the attending class? That's one way. Another way, even if there's a toilet in school and it doesn't have running water, if I change, how will I wash my hands? How will I clean up? It means I would prefer to stay at home instead of coming to school, isn't it? And, it, and we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. So what are the ways I said we can make this thing, menstruation, not to be and not to hinder you from coming to school? Huh? I said one word. Pad. Putting on pad. Yes, putting on pad. But what if a girl doesn't have money for pad? That's why I said. In toilets in the schools. Awesome. Please clap for him. Just a sound clap so that it doesn't take all that time. Thank you very much. If we have toilets, okay, these toilets now, are they demarcated? Okay, this side is for boys, this side is for girls, or everybody use one. It's demarcated. Awesome. Please clap for your school. That's awesome. So now, it means that if a girl is menstruating in school, she can go inside and privately do her thing, clean and go out. Is there water in the school? Yeah. Please clap for your school again. Well done, ma. 
You people have everything you need. So all we need now is part. Which Rev has brought, right? Can we clap for the organization? <laughs> Alright, also we are calling on the using this uh, medium to also call on the government. This work is not something that um, just us can do and also other organizations so that we can support schools with pad banks where if a girl is menstruating she can always access um, a menstrual material. Uh, I hope I've done justice. Can we please appreciate me? And somebody is going to talk on that. There's no other person but the executive director of Guiding Light Foundation. Please clap for her. Clap for her until she collects the mic. All right, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Um, please, there are so many people I want you to clap for. But first of all, you're going to start with the school principals and the school management. Then you are going to also clap for Rohef. Please clap for the organization that has brought this. Then I want a louder clap for everybody sitting here. Okay, okay, okay. Now I want you to clap for your mothers, for your sisters. Uh -uh -uh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, like um, like they said, like they said, I am Diane Kelechi Lawrence. I am a mental health counselor and a psychologist. I I happen to, by the grace of God, be the executive director of Guiding Light Foundation. A foundation that has been set out to help people that have mental health issues, both children and adults. Yes. Okay, now I'm here to do one thing for a, with a, in a very short, um, I'm here to carry out a very short assignment, which is to talk about menstruation and depression. You know, most times people, uh, most young people growing up, we begin to experience some different kind of feeling. We feel differently from, we begin to ex feel differently from when we were children, when we were babies, you know, especially when you're nearing the age of menstruation. There's something, a chemical in your body called hormones. In women, we have estrogen that works so much in our body, especially when we're coming towards that um, menstruation period. And this hormone is a chemical, it's a very good chemical in our body. This is what helps us to have babies as women, okay? If this hormone is low, or any other hormones in your body, if it is low, you might not have children the way other women are having it. So it is very important that you know these things, okay? But now these hormones, there are so many of them found in, the women, in a woman's body or in a girl's body. But during that time when you're about to start having your period, these hormones begin to develop. They begin to rise. They begin to increase in quantity and in the way they react in your body. So what happens when these hormones are there? They begin to make you feel different. They sometimes make you feel tired. They sometimes make you feel hungry. They sometimes make you feel um, like, um, like you need to sleep. They make you feel sleepy. You make you feel angry. So many emotions. Emotion simply talks about the way you feel. You begin to feel a whole lot of things that are not normal or the way you, it used to be. And sometimes we don't know where these feelings are coming from. Okay? Do you understand? Okay, who can tell me what a hormone is? Okay, somebody, anybody? Okay, tell me. 
A hormone is a very good chemical in the body. Simple. It's as simple as please give her a round of applause. Good. Now it's a, it's a, it's a it's a very good chemical in your body. Your body produces it. It is very good. So now when you have these feelings coming out from you, you are expressing it in different ways and in different manners. You find out that your your menstruation circle is near. Okay? But now there's something called depression that almost looks like the normal feeling. But it is not. Depression is a very strong, persistent, sad feeling. You just can't um, help yourself. You just feel very, very sad. Don't think it's only for girls. Boys as well feels depressed. Okay? No, don't think it's only for girls. Something can happen to someone and they begin to feel depressed. A guy, uh, okay, let me take for example, um, you fail your exams. Okay? This is a sad thing that has happened, a bad thing that has happened. And then you see the person begin to feel sad. And then the person cannot just stop feeling sad. Even though your friends come to cheer them up, or your parents or your guardian tell you, don't worry, you do better next time. Your teachers are encouraging you, they are supporting you. But you just can't shake off that sad feeling. Do you know what? That sad feeling is called depression. And it happens most times for girls before, during, or after their monthly circle. That is why we are bringing both of them together. So girls, ladies, when you are experiencing this kind of sadness, it is very, very important, very important that you talk to somebody about it. Don't just stay on your own. Sometimes you don't know how to explain it though. It's so bad that you sometimes you might not even know how to explain it. Or something has happened, something very, very sad has happened. Do you know what you're supposed to do? Talk about it. Tell your family, tell your friends, ah, this thing that happened, it affected me, oh, I'm feeling sad about it. I don't know why I just can't stop feeling sad. Anytime I keep remembering it, it keeps coming to my mind. Please, talk to someone about it. It's not for my mommy. It's not for my uncle. It's not for my friend. It is mine. And nobody has the right to my body without my permission. Are we good? Please give yourselves a round of applause. You know why this topic is very, very important? It's because it is very sensitive and everybody has to be involved, also the boys. When we talk about sexual abuse, it's not just the girls. I know so many times the girls come out, they talk about it, and the boys like to keep quiet because you are meant to, you know, the society wants you to be a man. But in this case, you are not, we don't want the term be a man. We want all of you, including the girls, to be as vulnerable, we want the boys to also be as vulnerable as the girls. Do we understand? Okay, when we talk about sexual abuse, you know, um, Ilda was talking about something. She was saying, you know, some of you will be saying my private part, my private part. Yes, it is called private because it is private. And your vagina, your what? Your vagina and your penis, your breasts, those are places that we call private parts. Do you understand me? And nobody, like I said, has the access to touch it. Do you understand me? Hello? Can you hear me from this side? Okay, when we talk about sexual abuse, we talk about, you know, when someone, let me use, uh, maybe a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, comes and forcefully, you know, without your permission, either touch, or, you know, play with your body, or say some things regarding your body in a way that makes you uncomfortable. Do you understand me? So 
For example, when you are passing, some of you don't know that this is an abuse. When you are passing and one boy is saying, look at us, look at our breasts. Our breast is big. Our breast is that. Look at this, look at that. That is a form of abuse. And we have to understand that this is not right. Hello? If anybody has ever said that about you, can I see your hand? Boys, the boys say, they say that a lot, right? Okay, okay. Now they are here, so they will understand that it is not right. Hello? Hello? Can I have everybody's attention, please? Can we hear me? Okay. So when we talk about, um, when we talk about sexual abuse, we have rape. Hello? Rape is, you know, one of the most serious offense that anybody, in fact, that is the most serious, touches your body, you know, inserts themselves into your private parts without your knowledge. Oh, without your consent, not your knowledge, sorry. So now I think I have your attention. So when any man or a woman, it can either be a man, it can be a woman, do you get? When they, you know, um, when they violate you by putting their penis in your vagina, or as a boy, a woman putting a vagina in your uh, your penis, or putting your penis in their vagina, in other way around. Yes, that's a form of abuse. And that's, please, when that happens, please don't keep quiet. Do you understand me? Don't keep quiet. Another form is, you know, I've said it before, when you are walking and somebody is, you know, talking about your body, her breast is big, her breast is that, please, boys, if you've been doing it today, please make up your mind that you will stop it. Amen. God will help you. Okay. Hello. Hello. We are saying this because sexual abuse has destroyed so many people. Both the perpetrator and the person who, um, who, who, who the act, the person that they did it to. Hello, can you hear me? The person that did it, some people are in jail because they raped. So is that serious? Hello? Some people that have been raped cannot, you know, when the confidence is gone, when I mean confidence, who can tell me what confidence means? Confidence means boldness, like you can stand and say, yes, this is me, and confidence means it's not being ashamed enough. Thank you. You know, when things like that happen, it makes you, it reduces the person, an individual, it reduces them to, you know, a piece, like, mm. like in fact, I don't know what to call it, it like a piece of trash. So it can have emotional effects. It can have psychological and physical effects. So it is not just the act. For the person doing it, it is just, you know, maybe some few minutes of fun. You just want to be... Okay. It's just, you know, the person just wants to have fun. The person wants to, you know, just feel cool, feel like a big boy. But the person you are doing it to, you don't know that the person, you know, for life will never forget. It has been proven that the people that you know, most times, you know, surprisingly, even family members, we have fathers that have raped their daughters. Yes. 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 Can you, so it is not new to you. Yes. I think this school, they, they have the knowledge of so many things. I think you should give your school a round of applause. Yes. So we have all tools. The others, I will come and tell you, sit on my lap. Yes. There are plenty of you. Please, when you see them, you do what? I want to leave you with something, maybe with this kit, with that, and, and you have an auntie that's going to be your favorite auntie. And we'll tell you, don't tell your mommy this, don't tell your mommy that. Please, anything that has, you always say that, you know, once you break silence, once you talk about it, ah, see, it doesn't have any power over you. Do you understand me? So once you come out, once you see, you talk to some of them will tell you, if you talk, I will do this, if you talk, please go to somebody that you can confide in. Somebody you can confide in and tell the person. Do you understand me? And for the boys, I know that you are meant to be strong. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong in you 
you are expressing yourself, going to your daddies, going to your mommies, telling them that, okay, this uncle has done this, this auntie has done this to me. Do you understand me? Please, don't be shy. Never shy away from this, because it can affect you. It can affect your education. And let me tell you the truth, and which is the sad truth. There are so many people that have been sexually abused. So, if you are here today, and it has happened to you, it does not mean that you are less of yourself. Do you understand me? It doesn't mean that, you know, your future is finished. Or it doesn't mean that, you know, you cannot make progress. In fact, it means that you can rise above it and be a better person. Do you understand me? I don't know if I'm talking to somebody today. See, don't let, you know, people deceive you that it does not happen. It does. And so, peradventure, it has happened to you. And you're struggling with it. Please, you can find somebody, talk to the person, and let them know that this is what you're struggling with. Because you have a very beautiful future ahead of you. And what that, the way that thing, the way that sexual abuse wants to do to you, is to destroy that beautiful future that you have. So please, come. You can tell your teachers. You can tell people that you trust. Please, talk to them and rise above it. We have great people. We have people that have made meaning out of their lives. That's why the fact that they have been sexually abused. Do you understand me? So please and please, I'm begging you, we are here today, not just to distribute cards to you, but to also make you know that you are important. And this is very important, and that's why we are saying it. That in any way, that anybody might have violated you and you feel like talking or you feel that you are alone or you can't uh, you can't help yourself please talk to us we are here and we promise that you know your secret is safe with us and more so it's not even a secret because you know what it's the person that is going to be ashamed not you do you understand me? It's the perpetrator that is meant to be ashamed. It's the person that has done it to you that is meant to be ashamed. So please, so that it doesn't affect you in any way, you can come, you, you know, if you don't want to come out now, you can come out later, you can tell see us before we leave. So we love you, and that is why we have brought this program to you. We tell you that we love you, you are special, and nothing, and not my words, nothing can stop your future. No, to disturb you small. So who is that boy that will volunteer to come and teach us how to wear a patch? Don't worry, I will guide you. I will guide you. Ah, uh, you poor boys, you will not marry one day. Okay, you don't want to get married. You don't want to get married. Please, come. Please appreciate him. Clap for him and his family. of anybody. We are here solely to do what? Solely to do what? Right? Please watch what you do because as some of you are sitting here, you don't know how to wear a pad. Eh? You don't know how to. Am I going against any? All right, fine. It means I have the permission to. Please. Can we watch what he is doing? Please watch carefully how he is opening it. Yeah, you're doing it correctly. You know now. You're supposed to be conscious of hygiene. Let's assume you've washed your hands and you're trying to put your pad, right? Good. So now, this is your pants. And this is the side where we're going to place the pants. If you know, uh -huh. So now, what are we doing? The short part of the pad is staying there in front or behind. Wow, he said in front, that means he knows. Awesome. Can we clap for him? So the short part of the part is staying in front, while the longer part is staying behind. Right? So just sweep this up. Okay. Awesome. And that's all. Can we please clap for him? Can we please clap for him? I've been talking 
since where we came here, anybody has question? Is there any question? Just write your questions out. If you have any question, write it. We are going to share this and when we are done, we will answer those questions. Please, just to save time, write down your questions, please. <laughs> Fast, 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 fast. Let's hurry up, let's hurry up. Also, 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 please girls, let's hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Be fast, please be fast, be fast. <laughs> If you call it, go that side. Go that side. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Some of you can be coming inside. Don't just concentrate. Make it two lines. Make it two lines. Make it two lines.
can't change the whole 